All right, so after a few days of working, my dream welding table build is complete. I'm turning 40 this week, and I am so excited to get off of the concrete floor and for the first time in my life, have a real working surface to create all these things that we do here on the channel. All right, so we built some special features into this that I've been thinking about for a while. Let me show you around the welding table and some of those features. All right, so for starters, this is a four by eight welding table, so it gives me a significant amount of work here. And I should mention my true dream welding table would have been a fixture table with all the holes drilled into it to put all the specialty clamps. Well, that's way out of my budget to have one of those. But coming up, one of the first builds we're going to do, I have figured out a way to make some specialty tools to allow me to work anywhere on this style table right here, saving a pile of money. So four by eight should take care of pretty much all of the major work that I do, with the exception of often I'll bring in up to 24 foot long steel is how I can get some of my pieces off the truck and then it'll need to be cut down. Well, an eight foot table is not gonna work for my typical 12, 16, and 20 foot long stuff that I'm often dealing with. I still may have to cut some stuff on the floor, 24 foot for example, but I built a special feature into this table right here to not take up any more room than my shop than it already does, but to give me a much bigger working surface. Check this out. All right, so thank goodness for that metal cutting circular saw from Evolution because I needed to make a precision cut here and basically match two pieces together. Otherwise, there would have been an odd gap. But I decided to build a four inch extendable end off of this to act as kind of like a support that uh, is automatically built into the table. And it's gonna take this table from eight foot long to 12 foot long so I can easily handle 16 foot long plus pieces of steel with a little bit of hang off on the other end. Hey, y'all may have called on that I welded in two inch receiver tubes all around this table for all these additional add-ons. See one of them down here on the other end that's welded in so we can change out parts. But I welded in two down here so I can put this table in. The problem is none of this steel is perfectly straight. All the two by two stuff that I'm about to pull out, it's got bows in it all different directions. And if I weld the top to both pieces, I couldn't get it to pull in or out. I could have come up with a different design, but I wanted to keep it simple with those receiver hitches. So what I had to do was weld this table and a big two by two piece of steel underneath here to keep this from bowing to only one of those two inch pieces of steel. By the way, everything on this table is thick wall square tubing. I did not skimp on the strength of some of this stuff. So now I can extend this tube all the way out because it's only on one piece and even though there's a little bit of a bend in this, well it doesn't bind because we're not welded to the other one. And trust me, the strength is there. So I can pull out this other tube, lock those in, and I mean, I can get up on here and all I'm wanting this for so I can hang another piece of steel out from here, 16 or 18 feet long, and have my saw on the other end. I can go out even further than this, but this already majorly extends my table, but does not take up the room in the shop. And there's another cool feature to this. Check this out. All right, so say if we extend it in and just leave a gap like this. Now look at what I can do. I can take four by eight sheets of sheet steel or that expanded metal, or I can put a four by eight sheet of plywood up here. And now that we have a support out here, I can literally run my saw across this opening, allow my blade to not cut into the table. And now this piece does not fall on the floor because it's supported on this. So this basically gives me a nice ripping surface right here to rip down. And you can see it all snaps back nice and flush to the table. I got to do some minor adjustments right here, AKA a little bit of adjustment with a sledgehammer to get what feels like probably a 30 seconds of an inch down, but nice smooth working surface. All right, on this end, I just do like a lot of people do with their welding tables. You can never have too many grinders, trust me on that. All I did was just weld in some angle iron. They hook on there nice and easy. Nothing very fancy about that. Did three inch square tubes for all the corners. Again, thick wall, half inch plate for the feet, 4,000 pound locking casters. I did all four wheels locking. They work nice and easy. Unlock right here. That is very important because of the way I'm mounting tools in on the end. I'm gonna be torquing on this table a lot. I'm eventually gonna be putting a metal bender on here too. And I wanted all four to lock in. Again, 4,000 pound rated casters right there will more than handle the weight of this table in any project I'll ever put on it. I left myself a lot of room underneath. I've got my stick welder, my plasma cutter. I've got my big evolution saw over there. I got my porta band. And I was able to fit an old toolbox in that I have right here. I love this. Gloves, pins, tape measures, stick welding, electrodes. 
all these extra clamps that I may need, wire brushes, hammers, just all kinds of stuff. Down here in the bottom, I'm gonna keep my other metal cutting saw, some sledge hammers, regular hammers, and I've decided to keep my air tools out here as well because I have cut off tools and things that I'll be using on the welding table. I'm probably gonna weld some more pegs on because I have room to do it, but just a place to hang some extra clamps. Don't forget, I got a pile of clamps in the box. Here's one neat feature. While the majority of my work I'm gonna be doing on the table standing up, I made a removable and fully adjustable seat because, well, why not? So another two inch receiver hitch with a big bolt right here, one inch bolt, that I can uh, adjust the seat up and down anywhere I want. And if you look on the bottom side, I did the same thing again, another two inch receiver with a big bolt, and I can move the seat in and out depending on what type of project I'm working on. Now again, the majority of my work, I'm gonna be standing working because you're always moving around a metal working project. But say if I'm doing a bunch of small repeatable parts, well, I can sit right here in this stool now, adjust it in and out. And I made for sure that I did not put any like clamp holders or any angle iron holders, things like that right here because I want my knees to go underneath the table should I move my seat in anymore. And now I can sit here and work on precision parts or small little projects. I'll be working on this table a lot, just doing review and talking and other things on the channel. So it's gonna be more than just a metalworking table. And the nice thing about this is undo one bolt, take my seat up, put it underneath out of the way whenever I don't need this. So this is something kind of unique that I've never seen before. I did another two inch receiver hitch, but I had to cut a groove out of it. So some bolts I mounted to this two inch square tubing could hold all of my extra grinding disc and cut off wheels and things that you're always needing out here. All right, so this just slides right out. And as you can see, got plenty of space for all different size cutoff wheels, grinding disc, and other things that I'll need. And I can put little spindle nuts and other things like that on here as well, and I still have room for some more stuff. And I could easily add another one of these down here if I wanted one for, say, hanging more clamps or anything else. Kind of experimenting with this design, but I've left plenty of room to add two or three more of these. It made more sense to make this go underneath the table like this than to I see a lot of people run bars across right here and you've just taken up all the room to put tools and stuff in and out. So I wanted this to take up as little room as possible and going under the table this way, accomplish that. All right, so one of my favorite parts of this table, if I need to work on a gigantic job that needs to lay all across this table, again, all these two inch receivers that I welded underneath the table, I can take all these parts out, but you're always needing a vise when you're working on metal. So, well, I've got one permanently in, and I welded in three quarter inch nuts and bolts right here. Still need to paint those that I can tighten down with a ratchet wrench and take any slop out of this. So whenever I'm like really torquing down or bending something in my vise, well, you can see it's nice and sturdy in there. It's another reason I need those locking casters. But whenever I need all the working room on my table or what if there's something else I wanna bolt on a tube and use down here? Well, I've left it to where you can just take these tools completely out. You can put them right underneath. I got plenty of storage on my table and now I can bolt a new piece of equipment in here or get a full working table back. And uh, I will be adding some metal benders and other tools later on, so I'll just build a whole new plate, bolt the tool to that, and then I can just interchange all the tools that I want here. And the way I've set this up, I can also take my removable end down there, my extendable table, I could put it on this end if I want. It's all compatible. And what I have over here is a six inch grinder with a wire wheel. I'm always cleaning metal tools up with one of these right here as well. Really handy to have on the table. I really considered adding power to the table, but I discovered these cordless roll-up uh, reels right here a while back. This has a 12 gauge extension cord in it. It locks anywhere you want it. And I can just run over the table for whatever appliance or tool that I'm running. Then when I'm done, just put it right back. It kind of defeats the purpose of adding power on my welding table, but I really did think about that. So one other very important feature I should mention that I add in, I have a lip all the way around the table. Because this isn't super thick steel, because it's expensive, I just left a two and a half inch lip. But that is plenty sufficient. That allows me to get underneath with a clamp and clamp down and hold a piece that I'm working on. But I don't want to go too far of a lip 
because of the thickness of this steel and potentially, you know, warp or bend it as I'm pounding on stuff or applying the heat to it. All right, it's getting crazy windy. I don't even know if y'all can hear me. Hopefully the audio is good, but I need to wrap this video up. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. We have so many DIY projects coming. That's all the whole reason of building this table. I'm going to dive into some this week immediately. So we will work on and improve the table as we go and we find out what we like and don't like, more things that we need to add to it to help us with our work. And we've got a lot of awesome projects coming up this year on the channel, some coming very soon. Catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.